going to get through this. He's a finish. 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 To another episode of Shadow Boxing. Today, my guest is Dr. Mark Andridge, who is a global expert of sustainability. Thanks, what sustainability Abel. is, yeah, Mark? Just, sustainability is meeting the needs of today without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So, in that, there's two concepts. One is um, to not damage the environment as well, and the other aspect is to meet the needs of, of the poor into the future. So that's something which traditional uh, people used to practice even 50, 100 years ago, the Indians and the Aboriginals and... Yeah, I mean in terms of the environment I think we've definitely lost our uh, sustainability credentials or if we ever had them um, as a, as a civilization. Um, so we've been exploiting the environment to really uh, fuel our current needs. So, you know, an example would be the oil and gas and, and some of the um, other extractions that these won't be here for the next generation and we're not actually saving any of, of, what, we're, um, of what we're producing. The main areas that I cover are, are financial sustainability. Uh, so in other words, ideally having as much or, or more money in its real value into the future for, for households. Uh, and the second, uh, and being able to, to, to pay for, uh, for your needs, your basic needs. Second thing is energy sustainability. So how do we use energy such that we don't take from future generations and also from our own health, for example? Uh, and then thirdly, uh, water sustainability. So how do we make sure we have enough water going into the future? Mark, the financial sustainability, is this includes only the households or the governments or the world or what? Well, I think because you mentioned households, <laughs> sure. Well, households is where you uh, is where, I guess, from a social point of view, it's, it's interesting to look at. There's a big gap between the rich and the poor, and you can see that in the measurements. The other thing to to see is that really we've only got a limited amount of data compared with um, the total information that's out there, at least in Australia. And in that data, uh, household household income is is a key metric. So where the money is coming from anyway? Let's start with the basics. Sure. Well, I, I think over the past, uh, uh, probably since the gold standard was, was taken off in the 1970s, a lot of the, the money that's in circulation is lended money. So that's from the Federal Reserve, from the Reserve Bank of Australia, effectively uh, lending money which wasn't in existence before and now suddenly and magically appears into existence because somebody has decided to, that it can be lent um, against assets that, that are supposedly uh, meant to be worth what they're told they're worth. So what is the backing of the printed lending money well, someone decides at the federal? Well, if we all decide that it's worth something, then, then that's the only backing it needs. So that's, that's really and the... Not the only banking it needs, the only banking, <laughs> uh, backing it's got. That's the only backing Sorry. it's got. Yeah, I that's right. I don't want to be too smart, but I think that's the, the way to say it, probably more precise. Yeah, very true. And I think also that puts effectively uh, governments, so supposedly you know, uh, taxpayers and, and residents, on the hook for whatever is lent out at the end of the day. So the guarantee is really the assets of the lender, which is the country, or the people of the country, or which one? Definitely not the government, because the government comes and goes. We elect in government sometimes, so they not have uh, responsibility for that. The end of the day, not the government paying back what we are borrowed. We, yeah, we're on the. We have to. We have to pay it back. Yeah. So how can we control how much money the government prints or the reserve is take care of? So is the reserve is not printing money or the government printing money or the government authorizing the reserve to print money in Australia? How does it work? So the plastic is coming from the plastic factory, and then it became money. Well, the the reserve bank is lending the money to the larger institutions, who are putting up uh, collateral or their own or their depositors collateral and then from that money which is allowed to be leveraged 
there uh, according to the Basel rules. So I think right now it's Basel 3 rules. They're not allowed to take a certain amount of leverage and they lend out more money than which they borrowed. And the bank determined what the interest is they're lending it out anyway. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes they are conspiring on the interest rate, as we know, because all the decisions are made in London and they're just saying, whatever you like, make a decision, and this is the interest rate, full stop. That's right. So that was the, that was the recent LIBOR scandal. Yeah. And it looks like there was uh, a group of people within banks or a group of banks who were setting the interest rates at a certain level. I, I'm not sure if we, I think it was artificially low. What that was doing is effectively taking money from every single saver around the world um, because uh, you know, basically people were getting paid a lot less for their real money or the money they had um, to have that in the bank and then the bank could the banks could lend that out at a at the same rate or a, or a higher rate, rate preferably they make bigger rate. profits <laughs> they got caught now instead of all that money going back to the people that it was taken from by these artificially low interest rates uh, a fine was paid to the government to the government <laughs> who is, again, who is not regulating put the money <laughs> not put the money back to the people either it's one of the issues at the moment with the low interest rates is that people who save money yes people who um, uh, pensioners or older people who've built up their wealth over a, a lifetime of hard work and who've been saving money are now earning next to no interest on that and through that they're actually encouraged to buy shares buy property by uh, less safe assets, and therefore they don't have uh, they don't have the same amount of money to live in, and they're encouraged to speculate. The banks borrow against their real assets, and they borrow against the depositors' assets, yes. and then they gambling this money on the derivative markets, which has not yet been stopped, despite of the five years of global financial crisis. That's just going on like a holiday. And everyone is laughing, and the bank has earning more, and they got the same or more, you know, bonuses because they just cleverly gambling the money away. So, uh, what's happening with the derivatives? Because the one thing which I heard, I'm not a banker, I'm not an expert at all, but I heard that the derivatives are uh, not even kept in the same account of the bank as the real uh, assets and the liabilities. So this is a real liability because that's caused the financial crisis five years ago, and still not kept in the real banking books. So how the hell I have to have a book for the tax office, which they can check any time, and the bank's got two books. One is the good book, when they're keeping the assets and the depositors' money, and they got the derivatives, which is all coming from that bit of money, on another book, so that could not affect their real statement for the government. That's just incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's incredible and I think it's too complicated for anybody to understand and, and that's probably the idea. But you know? have, I, have I represented the basics uh, I of think, the whole uh, yeah. game? Yeah, I, I, th I think the, the, the basics are, are there, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I actually have to confess to you, but I'm not an expert in, in that area and I don't think there are too many people who are experts. But something you touched on there was the, the lending and I think the, the covered bonds now which are in, in Australia where money is actually being lended out or banks are actually uh, issuing bonds which are backed by people's savings. That's something that's new that's happened in the last couple of, couple of years. Uh, and what that does is it puts people's savings, or deposits, actually at the same level as, um, as other uh, bank creditors. So that if there was a failure, then people's deposits uh, can, be taken can be taken effectively. To cover the bank's mistakes yes, or that's the market right. mistakes of the bank involved with. Correct, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what is the reason they not have the responsibility? Are they too big to fail or this is just a mythological statement? <laughs> well, if, if everything had failed back in 2008, I still yes. think we would be sitting here today. There would probably be a lot. And the sun is up as well? This, Oh, I'm not sure about it. No, the sun, the sun <laughs> <laughs> depends who you ask. <laughs> okay. No, the, the, the sun would still be there. Uh, it might even be shining a little bit more brightly. And uh, I think that um, uh, people would have to generally, or there'd be probably a few less people in finance. Uh, people would be doing some more, uh, some more real jobs, which would be, uh, which would be great.
for the for the world. But for the economy, yes. Yes, <laughs> but uh, but that's not what happened. The the banks were bailed out. Taxpayers were put on the hook. The only institutions or companies who we have to take care of. It's a big bullshit. I mean, what's going on? I mean, what's wrong with, with our other industries? What's wrong with the everyday people at home who you say sustainably have to maintain their own assets and their own earnings and spendings? How do the banks not have the same responsibility of sustainability? Uh, oh, they have more power, Tibor. They, they got more power. They have more money, so they're making the rules. <laughs> but who's backing up the bloody money? <laughs> Somehow, I think the taxpayers or the Commonwealth. Not the politicians, but the workers of the country, rich yes. and poor. Yeah. All these things just developed in the past uh, 15, 20 years. <clears throat> Is this any consequence of the dismissal of the Glass-Steagall in the 90s? Yeah, the, well, the Glass-Steagall in the, in the late 90s, um, I, that was partly, from my understanding, because uh, Citibank was taking over Salomon Brothers, which was an investment banking firm. Uh, now. The more speculation there is in the market, I think that, and the more that the banks uh, are, are putting the taxpayer on the hook, or at least not being able to fail, means there'll be there'll be more and more bailing out. And what that bailing out means is that uh, is that the status quo continues. The people in the more senior positions, or people getting paid more money, they'll continue to get paid more money. The people without money will will uh, get less relative to the people paying uh, paying more, and then of course the cost of living is going up uh, all the time with energy prices, um, with uh, with water prices, which are linked now because uh, you know, because you have desalination. Uh, you know, before we, we used to get a lot of, of rainfall. Energy, yes. Before we used to get a lot of rainfall, which would which would fall into the dams, and then gravity would give you uh, effectively feed. Your, your water supply. Now we're needing to burn coal, burn gas in order to produce energy, in order to drive the desalination plants, in order to, to give us water. So all these costs are, are linked and, and the, the financial system's linked pretty heavily as well. Okay, on that note, we have to go to a short break and please stay with us because after the break, we're coming back with more on one-on-one -on -one shadow boxing with Mark.